Well, two weeks ago, the region celebrated the return of high school football, but just before 10 p.m., word came from Merrill Green Stadium in Bryan that a player was down and that the situation could be grave. Rudder High School's David Wilganowski had collapsed without warning and was being airlifted to Houston for treatment. Obviously, he is back in town. A benefit dinner, in fact, for him begins in less than an hour at the Bryan High Silver Campus. Tickets just $7. Proceeds going to pay for Wilganowski's treatment. In about a minute's time, you will hear this inspiring young man's first interview since that fateful night, which thankfully was not his last. Week zero marks the start of David Wilganowski's senior season. His last as a Rudder Rangers star on defense, a year away from playing for Rice University. The game against Rouse looked like so many Ranger games before, with Wilganowski flying all over the field and even recovering a fumble. But with just minutes to go in a tie ball game, the team collapsed. We're back at Merrill Green Stadium in Bryan, Texas. There has been a stoppage in play due to, a, due to an injury on the field. Because of UIL rules, radio announcers Johnny Burns and Jordan Meserol couldn't tell listeners who the player down was or the gravity of the situation as paramedics and trainers worked to save Wilganowski's life. They are going to suspend the game uh, by uh, the injury that happened on the field, which uh, uh, we, we can say uh, our, our thoughts and our prayers uh, go out with, uh, with what's happened out here. Wilganowski was taken to Texas Children's Hospital in Houston for treatment. He later went to Scott and White Hospital in Temple, and Wednesday he came home to Bryan. And David joins us now. We really do appreciate you coming in, David. Thank you so much for being here, and, and I know the outpouring of support uh, from the community. We've heard so much of it. I know you've heard it and felt it as well. What has it meant to you with all the, the people have been saying to you? Uh, well, it's been amazing just from friends, family, the school, community, people I don't even know. I mean, I've had people show up at the hospital that I weren't necessarily friends with, just bringing me something to eat or something to drink, you know, something a little different. I mean, just coming to say hi, you know, glad you're doing well, things like that. I mean, it's been it's been amazing. Take me back to that night, because you were, you know, playing, uh, by all accounts, a fantastic game as you usually play. And then, fourth quarter, what happens? Uh, well, that drive leading up to the event, I don't remember at all. And it's, you felt nothing beforehand? I felt nothing at all. I felt great. I felt like I was playing a good game. What's the next thing you remember then? Uh, I remember waking up in the ambulance asking them to get the neck brace off of me because I didn't like the, the feel of the neck brace on my neck. But uh, after that, it was a hospital and then a helicopter ride, and then I ended up in Texas Children's. Your parents were at the game? Yes, sir. When did they come to your side? Uh, I don't exactly know, but I'm pretty sure they were right down there pretty quick. I've seen film, and they were right there. So. And when it was explained what was happening and what had happened, what goes through your mind when they say you were down and we didn't know if you were going to survive, quite honestly? Well, I feel very blessed that I'm here. You know, one, that I'm here talking to you now. But uh, I owe it all to Ms. Woodall and Doc Lozano and all the student trainers and the assistant trainers and the paramedics and the paramedics in the ambulance and the paramedics in the helicopter and the doctors at Texas Children's and at Temple that I'm here and I can live a, fulfill, you know, a, a very good life. When they started doing the test, was it initially known to them? Did, did you be, were you able to give them anything as far as how you were feeling that really pinpointed what was going on? I know they, they have an idea at least, but... It took them a long time. I, I was in the hospital, I believe, for like 12 days. I think the last two days, three days were the, 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 the days that they really kind of found something. And they really think that I have uh, long QT1, which is a type of... A uh, disorder that usually is in usually it happens in athletes because of extreme stress and uh, adrenaline brings out long QT and with the first uh, symptoms of it is this attack and it effectively will end your playing career at least yes sir you had a scholarship to rice yes sir. tell us the status of that uh, well rice coach came to me on Tuesday and he says you know David Bailiff came in there and he talked to me and said, we're going to honor it 100% and you'll be there if you can't play with us. You know, if they go find something, you know, good, then you still get to play, you're going to be playing. But if you're not, you're going to be right there next to me coaching. So. And is that something you're interested in now that you aren't going to be able to participate on the field that you'd like to do something with athletics? It's definitely a possibility. 
I, I'm definitely going to be there every day in practice, every day, you know, every game, every for four years or five years or however long I'm in college, I'm going to be there. So. And there's there's brains behind the brawn as well. You want to study mechanical engineering, is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, and the reason I chose Rice is because of the education. And it's close to home as well. We're going to bring your dad on here to talk mm -hmm. in just a minute. But um, the support that your family has been able to provide you in all of this, obviously the community as well, but what's it been like over these past couple of weeks as, as the Wilganowski family comes to terms? Well, we've always been close, but I mean, it's definitely humbling, is it? You know, kind of humbling that, you know, I'm here and everything's okay and that it's, it's going to go on. I mean, everything will be okay. Right. Well, we are so thankful, A, that everything is going to be okay, mm -hmm. and B, that you could inspire us by being here. We're going to have you stick around real quick. Carla's going to come up, and your father as well is going to join us here on set. We also have uh, plenty of comments that have been coming in as well, to kbtx.com, to our Facebook page, and to our Twitter account as well, letting folks uh, sound off. Linda, yay, welcome back to you, David. Everybody can come to the dinner tonight before the game. Again, that starts at 5 o'clock this evening over at Bryan High School in the Silver Camp cafeteria. Plenty more comments coming in. You can leave yours as well for David and about David. Certainly an inspiring story. Just go to kbtx.com, Facebook, or Twitter as well. You can interact with us here on First News at 4. David's back along with his father. That's next right here on First News at 4 from the people you know, the news you trust. This is First News at 4 with Carla Castillo, Kaylee Friends with Weather, and Focus at 4 with Steve Fullhart. This is KBTX News 3, the people you know, the news you trust. Welcome back to First News at 4. We've been talking to David Wilganowski. Now, he's the Rudder High School football player who collapsed on the field during a varsity game two weeks ago. Now, you may remember that trainers and paramedics had to perform CPR on the senior before he was eventually airlifted to Texas Children's Hospital in Houston. Now, his father, also David, joins us now. And um, I'm a mom. <laughs> I've got a three-year-old. And tell me what you were thinking that night when it happened. Did you immediately know it was your son who collapsed? No, I didn't. Uh, I was watching him play. It was a punt, so I was looking on the other side of the field. And then uh, when I looked down, there was a player down. And then when they said, hey, that's David down there, I started looking down the line to see for his number, and I couldn't see it on the sideline. So uh, me and my wife walked down there, asked the coach, that's David. And they said, yeah, that's David, all right. And so I went down there, and uh, they started working on him. And what's that like for you? Because I've seen the video of you walking up and, you know, making, like you just, just like you said, I've seen that video. And what's it like as a parent to stand there and not be able to do anything? Well, at first, I think I was just like numb. I, you know, it's like, okay, he's in good hands and everything. They put all that stuff on him, shocked him. He was jumping around and stuff. I was just fine still. But when they started doing CPR and chest compressions, that's when it affected me that, hey, he's gone, you know, and they're trying to bring him back. You really thought he was gone at that point? Oh, yes, I sure did. And, I mean, I can, I'm getting chills just now. I, that, two weeks ago, probably doesn't seem that far away. I mean, it seems like a nightmare. You know, you know it's, 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 it's hard to believe it happened, mm -hmm. you know. Now, he was also airlifted. I imagine you weren't allowed in that helicopter. I was not allowed. No. no. I, I know that from experience. They don't allow you. My son, at th two months old, had to have the surgery, also wasn't allowed. Talk about the having to drive to the hospital, knowing your son is being flown. You probably don't know what's going on with him, and you have to drive to get there. You're not with him at that moment. Well, it was, uh, basically it was really easy because we had a lot of good friends that offered to drive us to Houston that knew where to go. Dr. Larry Hurd, he drove us down there and then uh, Mr. Smith picked him up the next morning, you know, early in the morning to bring him back home. But we had a lot of people that offered. My daughter went to some friends, Ms. Wagers and uh, Ms. Poth and who got... Miss Hussey, they got the uh, our show animals. They, my kids, children do show animals. They took it to their house to take care of them. And so uh, it was easier than you would think, but we had a lot of people offered uh, to help us, and uh, it was uh, 
I, I mean, I'd enjoy it, but <laughs> it made it easier. Made it a little bit easier, right. absolutely. Now, we know you're going to the pep rally yeah. late yes, today, and you will also be at the game tonight. Yes, ma'am. You know, and you talked to Steve about what they think you're, is, is, is the problem. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll ever play football again? No, ma'am. Contact sports are out for the rest of my life, but uh, it depends on how I progress within six months, and it depends on if they do find anything in the uh, genetic testing. If they don't find anything and they can prove that it is not long QT, I have a chance this, this spring maybe to do track. It depends on how I progress. I may be able to throw the discus, but other than that, everything's out. But I'll be able to weight lift, run, and do just about everything else I, I used to do other than football. Well, we will certainly keep you in our thoughts and prayers and pray that that's kind of a silver lining in all of this, that you can still participate in some sports. We certainly appreciate y'all being here, and we hope you have a good time. There's also a fundraiser tonight. We hope you get a good turnout at that and just enjoy yourself. And thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts for being here today. Well, thank, thank you. you. The prayers have been working. Oh, yeah.